Yeah, so good morning everyone. So welcome to Big Data Analysis. Okay, so our topic today is uh, about artificial neural network. We, we already learned uh, linear discriminant analysis and uh, decision tree last meeting. Okay, so they are both <coughs> uh, together with this neural network are uh, part of what is called supervised learning. Okay, uh, super Supervised learning is a technique in artificial intelligence or machine learning where <clears throat> you have uh, input and output data okay? and then you can uh, basically mm, train uh, the model okay? using this input and output data okay? to calibrate the parameter inside that model. Okay? So, uh, Today, we will discuss something that you probably have heard uh, the name so many times, okay? Uh, neural network, uh, artificial neural network. So what is that? And uh, this is what we will discuss uh, in brief, okay? So, uh, biological neuron was uh, found a uh, long time ago, so 1873, uh, the real neuron. And then uh, someone suggested that uh, how the neuron work is actually to process uh, some information by receiving inputs from other cell and then sending the output down. Okay, so these are the, the neuron cell. Can you see it? Okay, so this is uh, one neural cell. Okay, uh, this is the body. So they call it soma, and then there are some uh, uh, we branches, yeah, like like the root. So we call this dendrite, and connecting uh, connecting one neuron to the next neuron is called axon. Okay. Now in 1940, okay, uh, and Tick uh, designed a simple model of neuron. So they use uh, bulb, okay, uh, bulb, bulb in the vacuum and to do what is uh, now called computer, okay? So, uh, and then in 1950, uh, uh, someone named Frank Rosenblatt make what is called perception. This is what we will uh, learn today, so. Okay, so based on this biological neuron, okay, someone make the computation and that mimic the real neuron uh, in the in the brain of human or animal okay so the brain cell is called neuron so it has around uh, 100 billion okay, cells and its cells can connect up to 200,000 cell, other cells yeah? so but typically uh, around 10,000 uh, other cells so one neuron is something like it with uh, uh, dendrites okay and the axons to connect with other uh, neurons Okay, so when a uh, neuron is excited, so we call it uh, fired through the connection with other neuron. So it's basically a parallel processing. Okay, that's why we can think very fast because of the parallel processing in our brain. Okay, so uh, then we want to model this biological neuron into computer. So then uh, we will learn how actually uh, the neuron work okay so Appian okay, is a biologist yeah, practically so he studied about neuron and then he said that actually the synaptic okay, here is actually larger when they uh, connect to each other okay, when they have an activity together so the cell will fire together will wire together so say you have uh, x in here represent this uh, neural cell i and then xj here represent the other neuron say name j okay and then uh, we call this uh, delta w which is, is kind of weight okay and then uh, from here we we can say that okay uh, this this weight okay can be uh, put into a 
kind of recursive formula here. Okay, the the next time n here is the time. Okay, the next time weight of this axon, okay, i j is between neural i, I and j, okay, will depends on the previous value, and then some kind of delta, yeah, some kind of change. So that delta uh, depends on uh, the other cells. So, for example, if you have a two uh, neurons, so I and J, or if you have no neuron, but this is the output, Y, so then uh, you can get that neuron with the output. Yeah? So that's the basic principle there. That means, okay, if you uh, use your brain often, okay, that axon will become larger. Yeah. So the part of the brain that you use often uh, through struggle, through practice, okay, you will uh, make it uh, stronger. Okay. The one that you don't use will become smaller and smaller, and eventually you forget about it. Okay. So uh, actually our brain is much slower than our computer. Okay. But we can evaluate all the components quickly. For example, we can cast the ball. Okay. Why? Because of the massive parallelism in our brain. Yeah? So if this is, uh, our computer is practically still serial. Okay. So say you have only four CPU or eight CPU. Right? So the parallel processing, but it's only eight or four, <coughs> the number of CPU. So uh, serial means you have a, uh, Processing in series, like this. Yeah? Parallel processing means you have many different uh, connections. So the fact that uh, our brain uh, is using parallel processing, that is the one that uh, clearly makes the difference. Okay? So uh, this is the schematic of, of analogy right? from the biological neuron cell. Okay. So what happened is you have some input here, okay? and then that input will multiply with certain weight. Each input will multiply with certain weight, okay? and then inside that neural cell here, say the input multiplied by the weight will sum all of that. Okay? Now the, the the result of that sum is called z here, okay? and then we we do some linear function to that sum okay, to get the output. Okay. Now, that same output, okay, we put it out parallel again to add many other cells. Okay. Each of these contain Y. Is this clear or not? This is the, the, the most important part here. Yeah? You have parallel input. Okay. And then you have parallel output as well. So this is not a function. Okay? This is a relation. A function means you have many input and you have only one output, right? Yes, we have only one output here, but the output uh, can be put out more than one. Okay. So what is uh, artificial neural network? There are, this is a family of model. Yeah? based on the analogy of neural structure of the brain. Okay? So there are two directions, basically, uh, of neural network research. Yeah? One is called spiking neuron model. This will study the model biological learning process. Yeah? So this is called uh, neuroscience. Okay? While in what we are doing uh, today, okay, is basically we simplify the neuron uh, model. Okay, it, so many of the biological properties are ignored. Okay? So in that case, we focus only in the computational algorithm of the neuron. Okay, So this is uh, advanced by the progress in computer science. Okay, So uh, this is the definition of neural network. So basically, neural network is a massive the parallel distributed processor, okay, made up of simple processing unit, we call this neuron, 
okay, which has natural propensity of storing in experience knowledge and uh, make it available for use. Okay, so the knowledge it's required by the network is uh, by from environment is called learning process. So basically, learning process is uh, to adjust the weight okay, of the synaptic weight of the neuron. So synaptic weight is between neuron. Yeah? So uh, that connection strength is called synaptic weight. That is the one that we store, okay? not the neuron itself. Okay, so these are the uh, brief history in, in neural network. Okay, so I, I mentioned earlier that uh, neural network start around 1940s. Okay, and then uh, eventually goes to 1970s okay around 1969 okay there was a, a a book actually the name is perceptron I, I i was lucky to be able to read and photocopy that book okay so by minsky and pepper and he proved mathematically that uh, perceptron was actually wrong okay mathematically so because of this so there is what is called uh, winter in uh, artificial intelligence. Okay? People, uh, when Rosenblatt uh, talk, talk about perceptron, people believe him, and uh, many a lot of uh, research fund from the uh, government to toward this research. Okay? It's very promising. But in 1979, uh, 69, okay, so Siminski and paper from MIT said no, it's not correct. Okay, but. Uh, what means can paper said is not correct okay uh, around fifth, uh, more than uh, 15 years yeah 1986 okay uh, this uh, hinton and uh, his friend okay, actually uh, proposed what is called back propagation okay he, he proved that uh, yes this is wrong because it's only one neuron okay so basically, a perceptron is only one neuron. So uh, they have no way to do if they have more than one neuron. Okay? But you can see later on today, yeah, even one neuron is quite amazing. Yeah? Uh, so in, in 1986, they, they can prove more than one neuron, so at least two. And uh, the algorithm is called back propagation. Yeah? The same Hinton, okay, eventually, uh, create uh, what is called uh, deep learning. Okay, so basically, deep learning is neural artificial neural network okay, that has a very long or deep uh, connectivity yeah, between neurons. Okay, so there are many uh, other name of neural network. Okay, so uh, what we will uh, discuss is only a multi-layer perceptron. And there are many other model of uh, neural network, yeah? uh, including Google TensorFlow is also neural network. Yeah? So there are many uh, families of the simple neural network. Okay? So these are the some of the name okay? that are quite famous. Uh, so we will not discuss everything here. Okay? Uh, in fact, if you want to discuss about neural network, one semester just about this. Uh, neural network is not even enough in three units, of course. Yeah. So it's very big. And a neural network has been successfully applied to many applications, okay? uh, from uh, image and music and text, okay? including business forecasting, and so on and so forth. Okay? So what is the strength of neural network? Of course, as men I mentioned earlier, Okay, the, the strength of neural network is the parallel processing yeah, of the whole input at once. Okay, so think about uh, neural network this way. Okay? In traditional program, okay, the programmer must write a code, right? You create an algorithm okay, to instruct the computer what to do, isn't it? So that algorithm usually derived from a mathematical model, correct? Right. So uh, to do that, you need to 
uh, what is called problem characteristic must be well defined. Okay. In contrast, okay, uh, in neural network and machine learning in general is actually to learn by example. So you don't uh, go into the mathematical model. You only give them data. Okay. You give them data, which is the example of data, not all data. Yeah? You just give them data. And then once the neural network is built, okay, you don't need to do any programming. Okay? So all you need to do is to train that neural network to adapt and to formulate its own algorithm. This is amazing, right? Okay, so the neural network and machine learning in general will find the pattern inside the data that no one knows actually is there. Okay, so uh, strength of neural network is nonlinear. Okay? So you only get the mapping of input and output. So it's basically you have a magic box, okay? black box. Okay? You know the input, you know the output, and then you can train this black box. Okay? After that, you can just uh, use it by giving the input. It will produce the output. Okay. So, uh, there is also uh, adaptive, okay? and uh, of course, the most important of neural network is, it is uh, neurobiological motivation. Yeah? So, all other machine learning is not based on cell of the brain, but a neural network it is. Yeah? And uh, it has been proven okay, in 1980s okay, that uh, neural network itself is a universal approximator, meaning that you can approximate any function, yeah, any function using neural network. And the input can be real number, discrete vector, and so on. Yeah. And later, because it's so many models in, in, in neural network, okay, you can use uh, for supervised or unsupervised learning. Yeah. Uh, supervised learning means you have an input and output, okay, and then you train that, that model. Unsupervised learning means you have only the input, and then the model will produce you the output without uh, knowing what is the output itself. So if you compare the output from your real data with the output from this uh, unsupervised, unsupervised learning, it will not become the same, because this is based on distance. Okay, so what is the limitation? Okay, uh, limitation of neural network, the training can be very slow. Uh, and because it has so many parameters inside, okay, it tends to be overfit. Yeah? Therefore, it has a poor predictive ability on the new data. Okay? And another uh, problem with neural network is ac the actual mathematical model is hidden under the neural network model, right? So you don't know what is inside, okay? So because of that, uh, you, that is a problem, okay? It's real black box. Okay? So neural network learn and continue to make mistake if there is a mistake there. So it will not correct that mistake sometimes, okay? Uh, so, and there is no way also to ensure that the network that you are using is actually an optimal network. Okay, so with that, let's go to uh, the main component of A and N. Okay, so one is called uh, neuron model. Okay, it has uh, activation function, aggregation function, okay, and it has a learning rule. Okay, there are many learning rule that has been proposed. And based on network topology, we have uh, two, two types. Yeah? One is called fit forward, meaning that you have only input and then going forward to the output. Or another one is called recurrent, uh, meaning there's a feedback loop inside the network. Yeah? So uh, basic neural network okay, is uh, perceptron. So this is what we will learn today. And then you can also use uh, back propagation. Okay. So in perceptron, the input are discrete, 0 and 1, or uh, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. 
and then the activation function is actually threshold logic so this is exactly similar to linear discriminant okay so the learning technique is called perceptron learning okay so you if you have a more than one uh, neuron so we can use what is called uh, multi-layer perceptron yeah? so this is more than one neuron okay and uh, MLP can be used to compute all the Boolean functions. Now, uh, another model is called pack propagation. So, uh, the input is continuous between zero and one, okay, or discrete, yeah? okay, or or uh, between negative one to positive one. Yeah? Uh, of course, you can also have a discrete input if you want, okay? and then the output is continuous okay? because why? Because of the uh, activation function with the sigmoid. Sigmoid is basically like S curve. Yeah? So again, the learning is propagation algorithm. Okay? So here is the taxonomy of neural network. Okay? Uh, this is called a fit forward uh, network. You can see here, this is the input okay, going forward to the output here. Okay? And another uh, topology is called a uh, recurrent yeah, feedback so you can see from here can go back yeah. from from here can go back in in the previous node well in here in this fit forward cannot go back. okay so with this you can see uh, these are some of the names of family model yeah, in neural network okay so there are what is called activation function so remember uh, you will have an uh, input, okay, x, and then multiply that input with uh, weight, okay, and then you sum them, right? Okay, that summation, after that you do a, what is called activation function, okay, from the summation to get the uh, output, okay? So if your activation function is threshold, that means your output is only binary. Okay. If your activation function is linear, then the output is the same exactly like the sum. Okay. So if it is piecewise linear like this, so the output is between, say for example, this is 0 and 1, or between uh, minimum and maximum, and continuous. Okay. This, this output is discrete, this output is continuous. Now, sigmoid is something like this, okay. S-curve. So, uh, in this case, again, the output is between the minimum to the maximum, okay, so usually 0 and 1, right? And it's smoothed, yeah? not, not uh, linear, like this, but it's smoothed. So, oh, uh, you can uh, use any activation function okay, that you want. In neural network, you can use any activation function. Okay? So, uh, in terms of learning, uh, these are the name of uh, a few uh, learning rules. Okay? Uh, the one that we use here is called Delta Rules. Okay? So, uh, Hebbian Rules okay, is the one that use multiplication. So, if the neuron X receives an input from another neuron Y and if both are highly active, okay, that means uh, both have mathematically the same sign, then the weight between the two neurons will be strengthened. Yeah? So something like this. So you will see here, uh, the weight will be strengthened based on this multiplication uh, of the two neurons. Yeah? And certain uh, alpha in here is a learning rate. And T is, of course, the iteration, yeah? time, time step. Uh, another technique is called uh, Hopefield Law. So this is similar to HEP rule, with the exception that the magnitude can be uh, strengthening or weakening. Okay? So if the desired output and the input are both active or both inactive, the increment of the connecting uh, weight by the learning rate, otherwise decrement. Yeah? So, uh, look at this. What's the meaning? In Hebbian rule, okay, you only use encouragement. This is positive learning, right? 
So in Hopefield uh, law here, we have a uh, reward and punishment. Okay. So while the other one is called anti habian learning rule, okay, when the two neuron do not fire together frequent enough, then the synaptic strength between the two is decreased. So what is this? This is negative learning. Yeah? You only train using punishment. Okay? No encouragement at all. So again, these are a method of training. Okay? So similar to human, right? So you can motivate using uh, encouragement, reward, or carrot, yeah? or using a stick, right? So using punishment. So these are the basic principle of learning. Right. So you you see here uh, the sign is negative. Now the one that we use is actually this one, yeah? Delta rule. So this one can be positive, can be negative. Again, uh, this is reward and punishment. Yeah? Positive mean uh, reward, negative mean punishment. Okay. So if you look at this. Uh, the weight okay, is updated based on the, the value of the uh, neuron yeah, with certain uh, eta here is a learning uh, parameter that we can set. Okay. There is another uh, technique to learn which is called winner take all. Okay. So in this case, uh, you let the neuron compete among themselves for activation. And then if one neuron win, only the winning neuron is able to get all the weight and all the others do not get. Yeah? So this is a competitive learning. Okay. Uh, you see here, uh, you just minus yeah, with the weight. You can see this is uh, called competitive learning. So you, you have the input okay, and then you minus with the, the previous weight. Let's make it competitive. Okay, so another method is called, uh, this is also what we use, okay, uh, a simple error correcting. Okay. So you have an error, right? So now based on the, the truth value, T, okay, and the actual uh, output, okay, then you multiply by that input to create that uh, update weight. So these are the few example of method to let the uh, neural network learn. Yeah? There are many methods. Uh, this is exactly the same as uh, linear regression. Okay? So in this case, you, you uh, again minus the, the output with the truth value. Okay? And then you square it. And then you want to minimize that mean square error, yeah, similar to regression. So, uh, in fact, you can also use linear neural network for regression. Okay? Because of that technique. Yeah. So, uh, in, in, in terms of network topology, remember we have a, a fit-forward network and recurrent. Yeah? Uh, fit-forward network have no loop, you see. Uh, this is the input. Right? and then going to toward the output and then no connection within the same layer yeah? this is one layer okay? there is no connection within the same layer so these are the name of the model that use fit forward network yeah? and the other part is uh, called recurrent network so something like this so one can go to the next loop yeah? so this is an example of what is called hope field network Okay, using Hopefield network, uh, amazingly, okay, you can create memory. Okay, so the, the neural network can remember face, for example, yeah, giving given a uh, person face. Okay, after you train that face, and then now you cover that face with a mask, okay, and it will recognize that face even though you cover with a mask. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, another example of uh, Elman network. So it, this is an example of recurrent. You see this is the input, 
okay and this are uh, the output okay but inside okay there is a current between the middle layer and this other layer this is like the input layer this is the, the output layer so the the hidden layer okay, this is called the middle layer is the hidden layer uh, is the one that have certain loop okay so uh, <coughs> the data set which include the information which can characterize the problem okay? so the data set must have uh, adequately sized okay, to do both training and test the network so you need to have uh, enough data to do neural network okay and uh, you need to have an understanding of basic nature of the problem to be solved okay so that the basic first cut decision on creating network can be made okay? so uh, in that case if you want to design your own neural network you need to design uh, two things yeah? one is the network itself and then uh, second is the internal uh, function yeah there are two function one is the activation function the other one is called aggregation function uh, the one that uh, sum all of this input is called aggregation function and of course uh, if you have a big data you need a processing power with uh, enough hardware yeah so these are examples. I, I actually wrote a book about neural network okay, uh, many years ago, yeah, about five years ago. Yeah, so you can check in my website anyway. So this is an example of uh, application of neural network. So you have time series data like this, and neural network can uh, be trained okay, to uh, to evaluation and prediction yeah, in time series. Yeah. Next, you can also do a discrete. Okay, uh, I think we 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 have uh, learned this in Weka last time, right? So, uh, using neural network, for example, you you have an input, uh, which is the gender and the car ownership and the travel cost and income level here. Then the output is the one that class okay, of the uh, transportation mode this person will use. Okay, so. Uh, another example, again, uh, if you have a number, so say handwriting or using digital like this, okay, 0 to 9, okay, you can also recognize image. Yeah? So neural network can recognize image based on that. And uh, regression. Yeah? Remember our uh, example of regression last time? This is exactly the same. Yeah? So you can also use regression uh, using neural network. Okay, so uh, again, this is regression, right? This is a uh, multiple linear regression. You can also use uh, the work, okay? And uh, yeah, this is my book. So up to here, this is the just into general introduction. Is there any uh, question about this? So if not, we can go to the detail. Okay. So okay, we go to the detail. What is called perceptron? Okay. So yes, uh, the slide is based on my book. Okay. So perceptron model is just a single neuron I know I will not uh, give you so much detail but uh, only perceptron is enough at least you get an idea what is neural network okay so and we will uh, do a boolean representation of n or not and so on. okay uh, here is what is called a uh, single neuron yeah? again you have an input signal x one until xm and then for each input you uh, multiply by a certain weight yeah? okay and then you sum all of that weight okay? this is called aggregation function okay there is some bias here that you can also input okay and then uh, that summation yeah, vk or s later uh, you do uh, squashing using uh, activation function to produce the output yeah? 
and then that same output you distribute parallelly to many other neurons okay so okay so let's do the notation here before you you uh, do the practice okay so this is a uh, neuron i just used like this so one neuron is basically the whole things here okay so the dendrite is the input yeah? the synaptis is the eights and then the synaptis efficiency is the weight here okay so the axon is basically the activation function here okay so uh let's do a simple input here is binary or ternary okay so binary means zero and one ternary mean negative one zero and one okay uh what is that negative one zero and one uh this mean negative man means negative okay one is positive yeah? so if you want to convert that zero is the same as negative here the same one is the same as one yeah but what is this zero in here in the ternary that means unknown yeah? so that's sometimes useful for expert system okay so look at this uh i have a neuron model okay and this is the input either zero and one and this is the output and this is the model okay so what is this what is this uh, output do you know what is this output did you learn about uh, logic and or uh, anyone give me feedback about that okay if you don't so I will just uh, okay. Let's let's open the Excel so that you can get the understanding. Hmm. Let's create the. Uh, Simple neural network in Excel. Can you see my Excel? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Eh? We have uh, two input. Let's call this x1 and x2. Right? And this two must be 0 or 1. Right? The input is 0 and 1. And then I have some weight here. So I call this w1 and this is w2. Right? And I have uh, another weight here. It's called w0. And of course, in that case, I will have x0. So x0 is always 1, okay? So, and this is the input that you want. So, for example, 0, 0. Okay? Uh, in here, w0, I give 0. Right? And then w1 is 1, w2 is 1. Okay? So this is given. So because it's given, I put as yellow. Okay, now I want to get the output, y. Oops. Okay. So the y is, uh, in this example, what is this? W1 multiplied by x1, right? And then multiply again with w2, multiply with x2, okay? is the, the example of neural network so the output here let's put it green is zero okay so if your input yeah your x1 
x2 yeah, this is your y is the output right so if your input is zero okay zero and zero the result is zero so we record here yeah what happened if your input is zero and uh, x1 is zero x2 is one okay so x2 is one again you get zero right what happened if your uh, x1 is one x2 is zero so this is one and then this is zero oh again this result is zero right and then what happened is this both one one okay so if both one and one this is the result is one so this is the output table right right so this is the output table so this is the behavior what is called n So, if you have a, let me put here, yeah. n of x1 and x2, yeah. so true, right? True mean 1, yeah. false mean 0. So, if you look at this, I put 0 here, uh, it's become false, right? Or I put another 0 here. Again, it's false, right? Or I put uh, zero, zero, or at least zero, one, right? And then uh, one, zero. Again, this is false. So this is exact the behavior of what is called n. So this is n k. So you got it or not? So the next question is. Okay, uh, using the same way network, can you represent OR kit? What is OR kit? Again, OR of X1 and X2. So, you cannot use uh, the same network to do uh, OR kit. So, the same network here you cannot use uh, to do ORCID. Why? Because uh, by changing only the weight, okay, you cannot create ORCID yeah? because of this uh, function is the problem. Yeah? This function is actually the problem. Okay, yeah, it's not possible, right? So now, if you use this uh, function, that this new function here, okay. Uh, you can get ORCID, you know, what is characteristic for ORCID, yeah? Uh, false and true become true, yeah? True and false become true, true and true become true. Only when both of them are false, then become false, yeah? That is called ORCID, okay? And, uh, yes, this uh, network will represent ORCID, but because of this function here, you cannot represent NK. So, so, yes, you can create a neural network this way, okay? but this is a problematic why? because uh, every time you want to train, you need to define that function, right? If you want to train the, uh, the model, you need to define that function. So this is not so nice to, to become a neural network. So we want, again, unfortunately, it's not possible. Yeah? We want to do... Uh, a function, yeah? those two functions above are not general enough. Yeah? Why? Because one can do IMKID, the other one can do ORKID, okay? but cannot uh, do both, N and OR, simply by changing the way. So this is not the one that we want. Okay? So the one that we want is called here a perceptron model. Yeah? So um, uh, it's fortunate that uh, someone found uh, this very simple model, okay, uh, which is general enough for most of, most, eh, not all, most of Boolean function. Okay, so what is this? You have uh, all the input, say in this case uh, x1 and x2, and then you multiply by the weight okay, to get uh, what is the net. This is the linear combination S. Okay, 
after that you uh, do uh, output okay, based on nonlinear activation function okay so this nonlinear activation function I call this V here okay so uh, for that purpose okay you will create what is called bias weight with this uh, with with x0 as always one okay and this is the neural network that basically you can do both uh, n and or at the same time yeah? okay uh, so this is the, the function okay let's come back to the excel okay so We, we calculate S okay, is the linear combination okay and then the Y okay, now it's not using this function so the Y is using this uh, linear discriminant activation function yeah so if the S yeah, if the S is larger than zero so I will put if S is larger than zero the result is one yeah? otherwise zero okay so what is s s is just uh, some product yeah? some product of this one and the weight yeah? yes so this is your uh, first neural network that can do both uh, and an or at the same time yeah so again this is bias we call this bias okay it's basically uh, in linear uh, regression okay this is basically the intercept okay so bias is a special synaptic arrow here x0 the one in green here okay, that is inside the neuron so it has a special weight to shift the value okay uh, away from the zero origin okay. can you make this a uh, simple neuron in your excel Okay, so yeah, this is just to show that uh, this bias okay, is basically the same as uh, negative of this value. Okay, so yeah, you can read for yourself here. So let's let's do a, a simple neuron. Okay of this uh, example oh yeah this is the neuron of not okay and this is the neuron of or okay let's do this okay this is the neuron of or so i will write here or okay so or eight. okay so what is the uh, weight the weight is one one and zero okay so let's try okay so if you have zero zero oh the output is zero that's correct right this one and then if you have zero and one oh the output is one yeah. okay and then if you have one and zero the output is again one and if you have one one oh the output is again one okay so this is orchid orchid okay we'll have uh, okay this is the output of or okay. 
if the two of them false, okay, the input are false, then it is false. Yeah? Otherwise, it is uh, all the same as true. Okay. Now, let's copy this and can you find the weight here? W0, W1, and W2 in some way so that it will become NK. Okay. So, let I copy this, uh, create a copy. Okay, I put it in the end. So, and then I rename this as N. Yeah. So, that's this going to be NK. So, NK. And get supposed to have the value of zero zero like this, yeah. One one only. Only when the both of them are true, okay, then the output is true. Okay, so my question is, okay, can you modify this W0, W1, and W2 in such a way so that when you input okay, this one by one, yeah, row by row, you will get this output. So, if anyone can do that, can you share your screen for your recitation today? Is this clear or not? Can you open your camera? Are you still there? Um, so I'm sorry, sir, but I kind of confused with the basic of N and or. Oh. So what does it actually mean? And oh, it's a logic. It's a logic gate, right? So. Uh, N mean uh, only when, for example, uh, today is raining and uh, I'm going to do some homework. Okay. So when you said N, that means today is raining okay, and you will do the homework. N. Okay. So uh, both must be true. To be able to say that the sentence is true. If any of that is not true, okay, then it is not true. Say, for example, today is actually not raining. When you say today is raining and I will do my homework, but today is actually not raining, that then that sentence is false. The the logic of and mean both of them must be true. The logic of or mean any of that must be true. Oh, okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, you did not learn logic in, in high school. Uh, I personally don't remember learning it in, okay. in, in mathematics. School. In mathematics, there is no I don't remember it. Okay. I think in high school, uh, grade 10 maybe, there should be logic. Right? And, or, if, then. Uh, if and only if. No? And then exclusive or. So these are the basic for electrical wiring, also the basic of computer, right? All these computer work based on logic. 
So when we said logic is basically and or if then uh, if and only if and then sore. Yeah. There are many other gates, but uh, these are the, some of the basic. And not, of course, not is also uh, another logic. So neural network is uh, early neural network is based on that logic. So if the question is if we can actually simulate that logic using this uh, simple weight. Okay, can you make uh, the OR gate that I created a while ago? And then you create the N gate. Uh, let me try to share mine, sir. Okay, okay, go. Cool. Are you able to see mine, sir? Mm, yes, yes. So, okay, let's try. So, your input will be uh, X1 and X2. That is the one that you put in yellow, right? Oh, yeah, this one. Yes. Right, okay. So, what happened? Let's uh, one, one, you get one. Okay. How about if you put one and zero? Oh, one and zero, you get one. Okay. How about if you have uh, zero and one? Okay, you get one. How about if you have zero, zero? Oh, this is not. Zero, zero must be zero right oh yes because uh, earlier you said that we, uh, we have to like do something with the weight right so right. Uh, earlier i changed the weight so i think because of that i didn't get the right okay. output okay okay so the output still not correct so what weight you need to put so that the output will be correct uh, um only only the only thing that you need to change okay is to to train right to train this neural network is basically you change the weight yeah w0 w1 w2 so that is the one that you need to change in order so that the x1 when you input the x1 and x2 according to this table right you will get exactly the y that you specify i get it sir. okay so why don't you try uh why don't you try two two and minus three uh two two and minus three yes no uh two w1 is two w2 is two w0 is minus three okay okay let's try so zero zero is zero correct how about zero one Zero, zero okay and then one zero okay and then one one oh you got exactly the behavior of n gate right yes, sir basically i mean how did you determine this one this area oh, okay good good question okay i will i will show you in a while oh okay. uh, how about the others can you can you get us uh saying it or you still get con confused about this. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I will show you how to get that later. Yeah. So, Netanya, Eunice, Amira, Marie. And sir. Did, so, did you make it? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, sure. So, anyone have a problem in that? No. No, no problem. Okay. So let's let's go to the next question then. So then you you want to ask, right? So how how to determine that? Okay. Determine that mean the you train, right? Can you see my screen? So this is the one that I show a while ago, right? So 
uh, now this is the generic or okay, example of so many x okay and then if you put if you have many input of x can and you want to get the or that means uh, except for zero 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 okay, all the others are one yeah, that is generic or you can also put that with one 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 one, and then the W zero is zero. Okay. You can also uh, create another uh, combination. Okay, so this is the end logic. Okay. The one that we uh, did a while ago. Yeah, change that. Just did, right? And. You can also use, for example, 1, 1, and minus 1. Okay. So the weight are not unique, right? So 1, 1, and minus 1. So you can also create yeah, for that input if ternary, not, not binary, but ternary. You see this? This is negative 1, 0, and 1. So then the weight must be different. Yeah? So again, you can also, if your uh, input is binary and the output is also binary uh, the weight can be used as one one and minus one in w0 yeah? that is also another possibility so for generic and okay so these are the weight all one 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 for w0 you one minus the number of n n is the number of input yeah? Yeah. so now, the question is actually the one that Minsky and Pepper a while ago, I, I mentioned, okay, that make the AI winter. Uh, it cannot do Boolean SOAR, okay? It cannot do Boolean SOAR. SOAR is something like this, okay? Uh, whatever weight that you put as W1, W2, and W0 here, you always cannot make this. Okay? <laughs> you cannot make uh, uh, 0, 0, 0 become 0, 0, 1 become 1, 1, 0 become 1, and then 1, 1 become 0. Okay? So our goal is to find W, 1, 0, 1, and 2, so that the output will be 1 if and only if the two input of neuron are different. So uh, using a single neuron, this is uh, proven by means can paper in 1969 this is not possible right so uh, but you can solve this using two neuron yeah? so if you have two neuron this is no longer perceptron we call this multi-layer perceptron yeah? so uh, what is the point here is actually the decision boundary okay the weight that you want to find, right? How Shane was asking, how I get the weight? Okay. The weight is based on this uh, function. Okay. So this is the bias, this is the input, and then this is your weight. Okay. It's a function uh, of sine function, right? Positive or negative or zero, right? So this uh, this is uh, x equal one, and this is f, f x equal zero. Okay, and this are the w. Now, based on that, we can actually create what is called input and output diagram. Okay, so let us use geometry to decide the weight of the perceptron with two input cells. Okay, so this is your uh, X1 and this is your X2. Okay, so the yellow dot here represents the possible input. Yeah? So what is the possible input? Zero, zero, right? Uh, this one is one zero. This one is one one. This one is uh, zero one. Right? So x one x two. Yeah. And these are the uh, neuron that we use. Yeah? Only one neuron. Yeah? So and then let's put the color. Okay? I used color code. Okay? Zero mean uh, red. Okay? Uh, green dot here represent one. Okay, so now if you want to draw a uh, logic or, or is like this, right? This is the table or. So that is exactly 
throwing input output diagram is like this, right? So zero zero output is zero, so I put red. All the others are green. Yeah? So the three of them are green. After here is okay, right? Yes. So then what you will do? You you draw a linear line. Yeah? Uh, what is this? S is actually W zero X zero, right? W one X one, W two X two, right? This is the summation aggregation function yeah after that you said the boundary of the threshold function is zero right and then you said that the x zero is one right we 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 always put x zero as one as dummy input cell so in that case we, i just remove this yeah so this is my actual uh line equation so in that case i i want to do it in x one and x two so and then I put it this way, right? I just did, I put this in the other side and all of this in the other side here. Okay, so I get X2, so I have W2, so I just put it down. Okay, so what is this? This is actually uh, the same as uh, Y equal MX plus C, right? Correct? This is the line equation, remember? So this is like the y equal c plus mx. Yeah. Can you see that? The c is uh, this one. Yeah, the m is this one. Yeah. Can you see? This is basically uh, like regression. Yeah, But n not really regression. We only have the line. This is the equation of the line. Yeah, x2... Uh, this is the intercept, right? And then uh, this one is the uh, gradient. Yeah? Okay, this is the gradient. This is the intercept. Okay. So uh, we know this is the slope, yeah, and this is the intercept, right? In that case, uh, now check, yeah. Using the threshold activation function, okay. So this is our uh, activation function, right? So we know that one if this is positive, zero if it is negative or zero, right? So then we put shaded area if this is uh, negative, okay? So we shade the area if this is negative. So, oh, what is this? Okay. What is this uh, Boolean logic? This is 1, 1, okay. and 0, 0, and this is the line. Right? So, in that case, you have uh, 0, 0, the output is 0, right circle, right? 0, 1, the output is 1, so green dot. Okay. 1, 0, the output is again right circle, okay. and then 1, 1 is green dot. So, if you look at Wikipedia, that is called a logic of projection of X2. Because whatever X2, the output will be exactly the same as output of X2, you see. X2 is 1, Y is 1. X2 is 0, Y is 0. Yeah? X2 is 1, again, Y is 1. So, X1 does not need to matter here. Okay, how about this one? Okay, draw the input-output diagram of this... Uh, a neural network. Okay. What is the Boolean logic of this? Okay, so you have uh, W0 is 0 0.5, 1 and 1, okay, and then you put it in. Eh? You put that into equation here. Okay, so then you know uh, uh, this is the equation of the line. Yeah? And based on that uh, threshold function, you refill the output color. Yeah? So the one that in, in this side is always red. Okay? The one in the shade is always red. Okay? So then you know uh, this is 0, 0 is 0. All the others are 1. What is this? Boolean O, right? So, so using that, you can create Boolean O. So then because you already know this, you... If you have uh, your own, okay, 
So I have a logic n here. All you need to do is to draw this line. Yeah? Okay. If you can draw this line yeah, based on the logic that you have, and that means you can find the weight, right? If you know the line, you know the weight, correct? So I have the Boolean logic n here. Okay, these are the drawing of n. One one is green, the others are red, and I know this is the shape, right? So I don't know the line, okay? But I can guess the line is above yeah, one here, and the intercept is here. So I can put any weight yeah, of this as long as I can draw that line exactly like this. Okay, so okay, you can see from here. Okay, I can put anything. Yeah? So if I put intercept one, I will get exactly this line. Okay, if I put intercept two. I get exactly this line in dot. Okay, so uh, we know the gradient is exactly negative one, right? Because the line is uh, the slope is like this. Okay, only the intercept that we don't know. Okay, so in that case, you can put any intercept. Yeah. So say I just make it half of that because I know this is one and this is two. So I just exactly put one point five here. So if I know the intercept is 1.5, right? Okay, I know the intercept is W0 divided by W2, right? and the gradient is W1 divided by W2. Right? So I know the uh, this two, then I can set so any value of W1, then I can get uh, W2, I can get uh, W1 and W0. Uh, do I answer your questions in in this case? Uh, yes, I kind of get it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so uh, knowing the output that you want, okay, you know the gradient, you know the intercept, then you can set your weight. Okay. So the same thing here. So this is a called Boolean logic none, yeah? not n. See? Yeah. Uh, if 1, 1 becomes 0, all the others is one. So uh, then you want to ask them at the weight, right? How do I get that that weight of W0, W1, and W2? Yeah? So again, uh, you know the gradient. Yeah? The gradient in this case is negative one, right? And then what you don't know is the intercept. So you know if I put this line, the intercept is one. Here the intercept is two. Again, I can put any value of the intercept. So uh, I just put as simple as 1.5. Yeah? So because I know the gradient formula and the intercept formula, again I can get all the way right by setting one of them. Okay? I have two equation. I have three numbers. So in that case, one of the number must be set. Is that clear or not? Yeah. So I hope this answer your question. So with this, you can actually uh, train the neural network, isn't it? So again, this is oh, uh, if you have a Boolean logic SOAR, okay, uh, you cannot use single neuron. <laughs> you see that why? Because you need at least two lines. You see that? Right? Because you want to get, uh, SOAR is uh, this one, yeah? 0, 0, 0, yeah? 1, 1, 0. And if they are different, this is 1. So if I draw, uh, this is the two green, and these are the two red, right? So because this is red, so I need to uh, put. This is the shaded area, and this is also the shaded area. In that case, I need two lines, correct? So one line represents one neuron. Okay, so uh, in neural network, yeah, simple. Yeah? Uh, one line here is represent one neuron. Yeah? So because you have two lines, so at least you need two neurons to represent store. Yeah? This is the one that missed by Minsky and Pepper from MIT in 1969. Yeah? So they need at least two neurons. Okay. 
that he did not. So this is the summary. Okay, I already computed for you. Okay, uh, this the 16 Boolean logic. Yeah, this is exhaustive. All Boolean logic of two na two input, and you can see uh, these are the input and output diagrams. Okay, up to here. Is there any question about the uh, no? So, uh, if you want to practice in Excel, for example, if you have many input here, right? So you can, and you have many output, you can also do that. Yeah? So you can have the input. This is the input, right? And then you you need a kind of matrix. Yeah? The weight is kind of matrix, okay? So that you can get the S. Yeah? The S is for uh, x6, x7, x8, and x9, and then again you threshold that yeah, to get the uh, y. Yeah. So, do you do you get what I'm talking? So in in this example, yeah, this is just a random example that I created. So you have five input and then four output. Yeah. This is a uh, you have uh, two layers, one. Out input layer and then uh, output layer directly yeah, without even layer. So uh, to do that, you this is the W zero, okay, this is W six one, this is W six three. And based on this line, you will have that weight in over here. Okay, and then you can multiply all of this with double X one with this to get the s right so s is just the sum product of the x with the w yeah and then uh, from that you can threshold that to get the, the y here is there any question so with this you basically know neural network yeah so I have a MATLAB code there if you are using MATLAB yeah? so if not so this is I think this is there any question So if not, let's uh, stop for uh, maybe 10 minutes, okay? Now is uh, 9.54, can we come back 10.04, okay? Uh, and I will upload the data for your practice later. So uh, we do have uh, U.S. Club of sales in Pantera. Yeah, can you see? So you can download this too, any of these two files. Okay, and then we will discuss about uh, query filter and pivot table. possible we can finish the data visualization uh, next week you will do the last workshop right is that correct hmm. so you please download this can you open this yes Yes, okay. So you remember we discussed uh, early in early uh, of our class. Okay, in the beginning of the semester, we talk about OLAP and OLTP. Okay, and we talk about uh, uh, multi dimensional array. Okay, and we want to do what is called theta cube. I hope you still remember that. And we have 
dimension and measure okay and we have this kind of data cube right and then you you want to do uh, uh, drill down yeah so these are the dimension you have example of dimension in location okay you have all country region city so on. and then you can actually create dimension of uh, time okay and here is the example of hierarchy right so you can uh, have hierarchy of location customer time item and so on so uh, with that you can drill down or, or roll up yeah uh, of one dimension or the other dimension right and then uh, you remember the data warehouse operator okay uh, slice and dice and pivoting okay i i think i already discussed this last time yeah so uh, these are the example of pivoting so today we will uh, practice this yeah? okay so please open your uh, data okay so your data consists of the id right and then the customer again this is uh, coded and then this is the store city the product uh, purchase date sales and cost right okay so uh, let's do that first we have uh, query filter yeah? First, yeah we will do a query filter and sorting okay i assume you have uh, are using excel okay so from moodle and Terra, you uh, download that data okay so these are the data that you have right so uh, in excel you can do a auto form to fill the data okay? so you can fill up the data if you want and then uh, you can also do what is called uh, auto filter yeah so you do a filter using auto filter and then you can select what you want to filter yeah? so let me do that in here so can you see my screen uh, my excel All right okay so i go to the data so I go to the data here, and then this is the filter. Yeah? This is the auto filter. There, when you click the filter, you have auto filter, and then now what do you want to uh, check? Yeah? So you can check only if you don't select all. Okay, so for example, you only select Acer, right? So I want to select only Acer. Yeah. On, on only certain Acer and then when you click then you have only the Acer right the same thing if you want the sales okay uh, greater than yeah? so you can put greater than or equal to uh, 5000 yeah? the, here is the boolean that we discussed a while ago and and or okay so the sales is just greater than 5,000 then you can see the filter yeah? you you can see the the number is now jumping yeah? based on the filter that we put yeah? so only certain product okay, and certain uh, sales and you can see that this is under filter by having this uh, filter notation here in the sales and So, can you make it? So, you can also find the filter of custom, say, the top 10, right? So, so I want to get uh, top 10 sales instead of larger than, so I want to get the top 10 sales. So, here is the top 10. Okay, so you can select the Top, top, top 10 items or the top 10 percent so let me check the items okay uh, this doesn't work because i also don't know ah so acer is not included in the top 10 okay so 
in that case you select all okay so the top 10 cells is not Acer eh? apparently Toshiba <laughs> right so this is what the, the database is doing in in database we call this query okay so in database if you can code you can use uh, SQL okay, to query all of this okay in Excel uh, that query is simply by clicking and checking this uh, things that often use eh? okay next uh, you can also create an advanced filter so this is an example we create an advanced filter of a certain product okay so first you create the criteria I will create the criteria here that the product is tail and HP with certain sales and certain costs okay so you need to put the field name you can use uh, larger than equal or smaller than and you can also use asterisk and question mark, yeah? okay uh, let me uh, remove the filter okay so let me do uh, this query what is that HP right HP star okay so product sales cost so this one the one that we put so this the product so I put it here and then the sales and cost again I put it here right so the product is HP and say Acer yeah? Acer star yeah? that the the sales how much do you want the sales must be larger than or say 1000 or okay, less than 5000 okay, larger than 1000 right and then less than 5000 okay, this is exactly the same so you can put like this okay and then we put up funds filter yeah so this is the list of wins right so the list of range is the actual data right and then the criteria range is this is the one okay and then when you want to get the result you put somewhere okay so that's what we will do okay so this is your whole data, right? So I put advanced filter here, okay? And we will put it in copy to another location, okay? And then list of range, okay? It's already A1 to A5001, that's good enough. List of criteria is this one, right? And then where do you want to copy? Eh? I will copy to, okay, here. And yeah, so I click OK. Then I got the new <laughs> filter data, okay, with this Acer and HP with uh, sales larger than uh, 1000 up to 5000. Okay, so up to here, is there any question? Can you do it? You want to share your screen? You want to share? Okay. Oh, you did. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Now, uh, can you sort now the the sales, the one that you filter? Can you sort it? Yeah. So uh, first, you need to highlight. Yeah. Before shorting, what you need to do is to highlight. Okay. Uh, this is the one that you want to sort. Yeah? This is the, the data that you want to sort. Okay. So you highlight the whole data that you want to sort. Okay. And then now you sort it. Yeah. 
uh, you're missing the column because you did not highlight the data you highlight the, the column so you need to go to yes the whole data set you highlight you can use n down to get the shift n down to get the whole data And then, and then you saw it. Why cannot you see? Hmm? Cannot be quick. Oh, escape, escape. Maybe something is wrong. Oh, okay. Then, uh, that's strange. Why the, okay. Uh, now sorted by the sales. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you can. Right, very good. Yeah, and and sorting actually you can uh, add. Yeah, you can add additional criteria for sorting. Right. Oh. Okay, so I think the the line is also sorted. So anyway, yeah, very good, very good. You you have done this, yeah. So you have a, a query filter that you have done, right? Let me show you uh, how we will sort. Can I? Share my screen. Okay, so you can either uh, sort the whole things here, or you can sort this one, right? So this is the one data that you have done. So say I have this one, right? Save and down, so I get the whole data. Okay. So. And then you sort. Yeah. You see, when you sort here, I can sort based on the sales, right? For example, based on the sales, the value. Okay. And then I can add level. That means I add additional. Uh, so the sales, and then based on the. Uh, yeah. So this one is from the largest to smallest this one also from the largest to smallest so let let do two two criteria there okay so if they are the same then they will base it on the sales and then based on the cost in this case the cost and the sales is exactly the same so there is no additional information yeah So you can uh, again you can create a sort by certain uh, variables and then you sort again yeah, by other variable. Yeah. For example, here I uh, based on the purchase date. For example, there. Okay. So this is from US to orders and so on okay so the query filter and sorting you're okay with that right yeah i didn't told but i don't need to now uh, in your data probably you want to add a uh, new field okay so let's give a new field called man and profit okay so man is basically uh, the man of the purchase date and then the profit is the sales minus cost okay. so let me share my screen again so i will delete this uh, result of the query a while ago So the query I just delete it. 
Okay, we have done this, right? So I come back to the original data. Okay. Now I need to have in here, I will insert insert column right? and then I will put this as month. Okay, in here I will put as profit. Okay, what is month? Just month. M O N month of the purchase date. Okay, oh, what happened? Okay. Month of the purchase date will become Yeah, yeah, that's correct. It's supposed to be April, right? Okay, so maybe this is the format that I need to change. Right? Is there any... Okay, so I will just put the format as month. January. This is super strange like this. Okay, man. Man of this one. Oh, there. Okay, so wrong formatting. Okay, so we get the man, which is four. Right? And then the profit is just the sales minus cost, right? Okay, so this is the profit. Bring it. Yeah? Seven. Five 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 minus seven thousand is five thousand. Okay, so uh, we copy this. Okay, so we copy this. So I just go down, right? Five thousand one, and then shift and up. So I copy this. Okay, the same thing here. Okay, I copy this one. Shift and up and control T. Yeah? So I got the copy. Okay, so with this, you have a man and profit. Okay, can you make it? So you add new field basically. Yeah? In, in uh, any data analysis, okay, you can create new variables based on the existing variable. So based on the existing variables, you can, uh, and of course you can also put a uh, name. Yeah? So the whole data set here, so, oops. from 555 down here, I can give name as profit. Yeah? Profit, yeah. And you see, I have a name as profit in the name box. Okay. Okay, so so that is your three. And then I can categorize okay the data by the rule. Okay. So let's name this profit category. Okay, so if the profit is uh, less than one quartile or between uh, one to two quartile and so on, yeah. So we divide the profit into four categories. Yeah? One, two, three, four based on this uh, criteria. Okay. So let's do that. So we call this uh, profit category. Yeah? So if, right, pro, if this one is less than uh, quartile of profit right one then one yeah? or else 
if again ya. If this one less than ya, quartile of profit of the profit to right ten to ya, or else if again ya. Or else if again what this value is less than quartile again the last uh, quartile three right profit three okay then three otherwise four huh? so how many should we close it okay let's close it. okay so this is five 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 is in the category one okay so we just copy all of this there okay so oh it's computed yeah a little bit slow because it's uh, thick okay. so we have this profit category okay up to here is there any question so i will just save this to us so i will just put this in analyze Okay. Can you make it? So you can make three uh, fields. Yeah? Man, profit, and profit category. Can you do that? So once you can do that, we can go to the next lesson. Yeah? Okay. The next lesson is to find, okay, remember, oh, you can add one more if you want, cross margin, uh -huh. okay, okay, cross margin is the profit divided by sales, oh, let's do that, so we can get cross margin with this the profit divided by the sales. Is that correct? Cross margin. Oh, where is it? Did you finish? Is it also finish? Yeah, profit divided by sales. Yeah. Right, profit divided by sales. So. Uh, gross margin is a number less than one, so I put as percentage yeah? with two digits. Okay, so oh, now you can see the gross margin is seven percent. Yeah? Okay, so I copy. Oh, I can get the gross margin here. Okay. Now you can start to see the percentage. Can you make it? Okay, so now your task, go to the next slide, right? Your okay so now you will do uh, similar to all operation okay uh, based on your query filter and data so you will learn about this yeah? uh, drill down roll up grouping before and uh, formatting yeah? and charting of course yeah? so you already did that so okay once you make this okay let's create a pivot table okay so we want to find okay this is the one that you want okay can you find what is the total pro, total number of sales for each product 
can you find the total number of sales for each product? So you will get the product and then the count of sales. So what you will do is you go to A1 here and then insert pivot table and then new worksheet. Okay. And then what you will do, you go to the product. Okay, put it here. Okay. And then what do you want? I want to get the uh, total number of sales for each product. So sales. So I need to get the sales. Okay. And then I put it here. But this is the sum of sales, right? So you need to. Uh, change that to uh, the count instead of the sum. Yeah, there. So you can. Uh, here I get uh, uh, what is the total okay, for each sales. Yeah. Okay, so this is the. What is the total number of sales per each product? This is the total number of sales per each product. The count. The count of sales. Of course, the total sales is 5,000, so now sorted by each product. Okay. Next. Okay. Can you drill down from there? Yeah. So then you ask now from there, you want to drill down, right? Okay, I know the number of sales for each product. I want to know where, eh, where each product is sold, right? So in that case, uh, you need to track the store of the, the store of the city. Yeah? So you go here, store city, okay, and then you track here. There. Wow, I. I uh, drill down, right? Okay, so I drill down okay, from the uh, pro uh, count of product of its uh, its product and the sales of its product now by city. Yeah? So now by city. So this is called drill down, yeah. So if you if you remove by city. Okay. If you remove out this city, you basically uh, roll up. Okay. So if you include the city, you drill down to go to the detail. Okay. The, the total is still there. So this is the, the location dimension, this is the product. Is this clear? Can you make it? Yeah, so once you finish, let's give a name. Yeah. So this one is the data. So I'll rename it as data. Right? And then this is what do you want to call this? Product by sales. Yeah? Let's give a name as product sales city. I got that. Okay. Next, uh, we want to know. Okay, we want to roll up. Okay, I don't want to know the product. I want. I want to aggregate only the number of units sold for each city. Oh, how to do that? I want to know the count, the count of sales per each city. Hmm? So let's copy. Okay, I create a copy here. I put it down in the end. 
Okay, so I want to get let rename this as sales city. Eh? Sales by city. I don't want to know the the product sales city. I want to get the sales of per city. So I need to remove the the product. Eh? I need to remove out. There I got that. Eh? You see? So you you aggregate. Eh? So okay, up to here. Can you can you uh Share your screen, probably. Axel, can you share your screen? Or Stephanie? Anyone want to share your screen? If you have difficulty, I can help you. Is this too fast? Can you follow or not? Good. So you get the store by city, okay, and then sales per city. Oh, you got okay. excellent. Easy, right? Just drag and drop, okay. Okay. So uh, now, is there any question? No question. How about the others? Can you? Can you, some of you can share your screen? Angelina, Nikita. Can you share your screen? Karin. Amira. I'm still making it, sir, because okay. I was lost previously. Hmm. Oh, which part you lost? Uh, because uh, previously I was trying to input the profit category. Ah, oh, profit category. What the others? Yenny. You want to share the screen? Yenny. Yenny Chandra. Shane, can you get the total sales for each city and month?
Anyone want to share screen? Uh, sorry, sir. What what criteria did you ask? Oh, can you make uh, city and? Okay, for example, each city and month. Total sales for each city and month. Is it right this way, sir? Okay, very good, very good. Now, can you rotate this one? What, sir? Rotate. For example, the man is in the columns and then the city is in the row. Oh, you, you mean? Uh, yeah. Wait, sorry, give me time. Pivot. Pivot means uh, pivoting mean you rotate. Okay? The row become column, column become city. So all you need to do is just drag and drop. Okay, from column to row, row to column. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here. No need to remove, just drag and drop. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this way, right? Or actually in, in, in this is better. Row and column. Uh -huh. Rather than rather than here, you can just go in this field. Field setting or no, it's just drag and drop. I so the store city you put it in the row. There. <laughs> right. It's easier, right? Okay. Very good, very good. So now, oh, where, where is Miss Tanya in meeting? Okay. So. Now we can we can also do uh, can you see my screen? So this is the product by sales city a while ago, right? We can also do a hierarchy, you know. We can do a grouping. Okay. So here for example I have Acer, right? So I I join the Acer. One, two, three, four. Right, this is all Acer. Can you see? And then I go to the where is the analyze. Okay. So I put group selection here. Okay, and then I name it Acer. Okay. How about this tail? Okay, so this this tail. Again I make group selection. And then I name it tab. Yeah. And the same thing. Uh, how many you have? Oh, this is HP, right? So you highlight this, and then you click group selection. Yeah. And then this is called HP. Yeah. Here I have Sony. Again, I make group selection. I name this Sony. And the last one, this is Toshiba, right, group selection, and name it Toshiba. Yeah. Okay, so I can uh, hide, okay, and I can hide this so that I can get directly, okay, only Acer, okay, the total Acer numbers. Total, and then I can drill down okay, to see the detail of the product. Yeah? So this is the uh, maybe we can just name this as brand, right? So you 
can uh, roll up okay, and drill down simply by clicking this uh, one here. Yeah? Okay, so I hope with this you can uh, report for your group project. Okay. Right, so you can do a, a show and detail. Right. This is the now depends on you what you want to show. And of course you can also do a formatting. Yeah? You can do formatting. Okay. Uh, that one is rather simple. Okay. Right, so you can select what format you want. For example, okay, I will select this one. Okay, you can do formatting. So if you don't like, you can select any other formatting that you want. Okay. So this is now making your. Uh, Now, in that formatting, you can also add it. Okay, so, the band column. Okay, and you can also add uh, drum total. Okay, and subtotal if you need. Yeah. So, you can just select this. Okay. So, with that, you can start to create a nicer presentation. Okay. Okay, and uh, yeah, shorting is finished. Next is, of course, to do charting. Okay, so just drag and drop the field into the page field. Okay, and then you can select the, the chart type. Yeah. So here. If you want to do a pivot table in right and say I want to do uh, this on the product yeah. the product right and then uh, this on the month and then this on the profit now okay. this on the profit now I can do a pivot chart. Okay, say you want to do a pivot chart like this. So let's make it 3D. Okay. Let's see. So this is based on the product, so this is supposed to be. Okay, so this is based on the uh, different month, okay? profit for different month, okay? for each product, and so on. So now it's important sometimes to ask the question. Yeah? Again, you need to ask the question first before you do analysis. Right? So these are the questions. The example of question that you want to answer using your analysis. Yeah. So, for example, can you find the top ten percent of the sales? Can you uh, charge the sales by each month? Yeah? Can you charge the sales by each city? And can you charge the sales by each city and each month? Yeah. And so on. So, how many units? Uh, sold in each city in each month for its profit category. Yeah. Is it possible to answer all of these questions? So, uh, once you make the uh, charting and the table, right? Those are your report. So, and based on that report, okay, uh, now when your new data come in, okay, so every month or every day or every week, you can update your data, your prediction, yeah, 
uh, based on the new data that you have uh, updated. Okay. So this is the power of uh, big data analysis. What do you think? So can you chart me uh, its brand by average profit? Anyone can show me the chart of its brand by average profit? So I want to ask this uh, question. I will put in the chat. Okay, so if you can show any of this, you can claim your recitation point. So this is what is expected in your report next week, okay? So you can do data analysis based on uh, supervised learning in the regression. If the uh, category, uh, if your uh, output is numeric, or you can use supervised learning in the neural network decision tree okay, or LTA. If your data is categorical, your output is categorical. And then you can also do uh, query filter and all up, yeah, all up operation yeah, to create uh, a reporting. Okay, so, so this is your final report, right? I hope you can make it. Anyone want to show your screen? To answer any one of that question that I posted in the chat. Sir. Can you see my screen, sir? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Still blank. Still blank, sir. Hmm? Can you see my screen or? Can anyone see Lindsay's? Yeah. 
Can you see her screen? Well, sir, I think it is error. <laughs> okay. Mm. So there is a technical glitch. Maybe you can restart. So put uh, off and then uh, restart to share your screen again. Can you restart? Oh, where is she? Okay. Anyone want to share screen? Only make a plot the average profit. Hmm, go. Cool. Sure. Okay. Is it like this? Yeah, this is by okay, by average profit. Yeah, very good. Can you chart this, Amira? Oh wait, wait. for chart or recommended chart that's okay cancel it and then you can go to uh, you can you can cancel this and then go to recommended chart yeah. why it's cannot yeah cannot there are no recommended chart for the data you saw Okay, okay, so then uh, you can just use people, people chart. <clears throat> right, okay. Uh, okay. I think new worksheet is fine. New worksheet. Okay, new worksheet. Huh? At least two row source of data. Common require at least two rows source of data. You cannot use common in only one row. Oh, what what did you select? Oh, uh, wait, wait. How? So only this until this. Okay. Why is it so okay? Um. I think I think you you don't charge this one. You charge directly from the source. Also, I should directly from the data. Yeah, from the real data. There. Uh, go to A one. Go to the original data. Where is the original data? This is the original data. Okay, so go to A one. A one. A one. Yeah, okay, and then uh, P for chart. <clears throat> okay, um, okay. Now you can put, what do you want to put? Oh, just like previously. Yes. Is the count right? Oh, oh, the average. Okay. okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, very good. Yeah. 
so you can you can start to do a charting also right then uh, of course when your data updated okay uh, your chart will automatically update it right thank you sir yeah, thank you yeah thank you so anyone else want to share your screen to share the screen <clears throat> so okay let me go to the data again I will show you something else this data again <coughs> and I want to show you how to chart with two uh, series okay so say I have the data of what okay, so I have this data just copy this huh? just copy this I will create it into a new sheet okay and this is my the one that I want to chart okay <coughs> So these are the products right and then i want to chart the sales okay so i want to chart the sales and then i want to chart the cross margin okay? <clears throat> so i create the from here i can do a conditional formatting okay so i can do a conditional formatting and then you can set the rule yeah? okay so for example, I can just do like this so to, to create certain uh, conditional formatting, right? <clears throat> and then I can say, uh, uh, based on that profit category, okay, so I can do a conditional formatting of the icons, yeah? so, okay, so if uh, four become green yeah? category one is red yeah? so that means uh, that is remember the kpi for example this is the kpi okay so you can you can uh, check whether this is red or green yeah? directly here <coughs> can you see that okay now i want to chart okay i want to chart the product and the sales and the cross margin yeah? me chart all of this and then insert say I want to chart combo okay so I want to chart combo so I want to see uh, product sales margin I don't want to know the man, right? In that case, I will just delete. The cost is green, so I don't need that. I delete. Okay. The profit category is I don't need. The sales I need. So I get the data. Okay. So I don't need the man. So I remove the sales I need the profit I don't need so I remove profit category I don't need so I just remove okay and then I click OK now I have uh, uh, sales and gross margin right but you see the gross margin 
value is of course uh, only percentage while the sales is uh, 7,000 something the gross margin is less than one right that's why you see the the, the chart of uh, gross margin is very small here the, the orange this is not what we want right so so what we want we want to put the gross margin okay in the second okay uh format data series okay and then you go to the secondary axis yeah. then okay once you put it into secondary axis can you see now the gross margin is on the right okay can you see that okay so talk to the data yeah so the data contain Okay, so the data I, I don't need the purchase I will just oh okay because of this uh, uh, may have did they, they combine automatically combine product and purchase data yeah. okay. so you can put it down a little bit down like this so that you can see okay anyway so if you don't like it, you can also change that uh, select data, and you can edit this category yeah, to to become only this uh, label. Okay, so this other label. You see, we we can start to uh, see that this is the sales and this is the gross margin. Okay, in that case, you can add chart element right on the horizontal axis. That is the product you type this is product and then in the chart element of the vertical axis okay the primary this is the sales right and then add again okay on the secondary vertical okay so that is the cross margin yeah. there Now you have the chart that you can show yeah, as your report. Okay. So important here you can you can combine uh, two chart yeah, together into one hybrid chart. Okay. Okay. So so far is there any question? So you have learned uh, a lot of things today. I hope this is useful. Okay. can create a report yeah, for your uh, key performance indicator something like this okay based on the so you basically create a scorecard right okay, based on your company performance you can say that this is actually uh, red or green or yellow yeah, for the KPI right. and again you can chart and then you can create a table yeah. okay. and formatting that table also right so you can create grouping for the brand here yeah. and you can do a table formatting Okay, so 
So you can roll up, you can drill down, yeah, you can do also pivoting to rotate, right? So all the all up operation you can do already. And you can also add new field. Okay, so I think that's all for today. So is there any question? You want to share your screen? We still have a few minutes before we end our class. Is this something difficult or not? So next week is our final class. Okay, you will uh, uh, present your project. Okay, and we'll discuss about visualization. And I hope we can also touch a little bit about uh, uh, clustering. Unsupervised learning. Okay, so if you don't have any question, I think it's the time. So thank you very much for today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.